Functional Behavioral Assessments, or FBAs, are an incredibly helpful tool to understanding what the functions of a child or teen's behavior may be so that we can replace the negative behavior with a positive behavior that satisfies that function. Look at the documentary example of a teen and their family that's on the course site. The teen has explosive rage, oppositional behaviors, and physical and verbal violence toward his siblings and mom. An FBA could help them look at the slow and quick triggers and the consequences he's receiving. And if he wants attention or power, there are healthy ways to get these needs met. The reason the field moved toward behavioral analysis is that the traditional interventions only work for some students. But this method, although they may, may take some more time investment with multiple parties, can be very effective in resolving behaviors as it starts with the behaviorist assumption that all behavior has a purpose. FBAs are also required by IDEA, the Individuals with Disabilities Education Act, as part of the identification process for emotional and behavioral disorders, or if behaviors are leading to exclusion from the classroom for more than 10 days. With an FBA, you assess the environment as well as the behavior, what events in the environment currently motivate or maintain this particular behavior. So the FBA process takes a functional approach, and by that I mean they are, they are looking at situational triggers, slow and quick triggers that maintain behaviors, as well as looking at what purposes these behaviors may serve. Usually there are at least a couple of functions behind a behavior. Slow triggers or setting events would include such things as medications, such as if a student forgot to take them for mental health issues or is not taking them yet may need them. Another example would be sleep, an accumulated sleep debt, or family issues like an upheaval in the family or crisis, or physical, sexual, or emotional abuse that may have occurred to the student in the past or is currently happening. This could also include hunger or not having a well-balanced diet that can lead to severe constipation and pain or other health medical issues. Immediate antecedents or quick triggers would include things like incidents that happen right before the behavior, such as an altercation on the bus or on the ride to school with a parent or someone runs into them in the hallway or they find out they didn't prepare for an exam or do well on an assignment. There are a number of behavior functions or reasons why the behavior is occurring. It's working to address a need the student has. For example, many students desire control or power in a situation or event. It could be that they avoid or escape a task or an activity to avoid a consequence. They may not know how to do the coursework and so act out to get out of working on the assignment in class. They may want attention, and so children may put themselves in the foreground of a situation. It may be a behavior that helps them get accepted by a group of people or a friend, which is really important in upper elementary, middle school, as well as high school. Peers are incredibly important to them. It may be an expression of self, where a child develops a form of expression, but in an inappropriate form and timing of when used. It could be for gratification. The child is self-rewarded or pleased, and the reward is self-determined. It could also be for the purpose of getting justice or revenge for some prior conflict with another student. Again, typically there's more than one function behind a behavior. A child who talks back and begins to talk louder and acts up until they're asked to leave the classroom is getting out of the work at hand. The first step of an FBA is to target or define the behavior specifically and concisely. There are four tests one should ask themselves as they define a positive behavior instead of the negative behavior they are exhibiting. The stranger test is, could a stranger see the behavior as defined or written? It needs to be observable behavior and measurable. The so what test reminds us to pick our battles. Is this really the most important behavior that needs to be addressed? A fair pair is referring to the selection of a positive behavior to replace the negative behavior that serves the same functions. The final test is the dead man's test. If a dead man can do the behavior as it's written, then it needs to be rewritten. It can't be passive. An example of a positive behavior replacement could be Josie will write answers to the questions of her daily assignment and receive one point for each minute of task engagement. The points are exchangeable for free time during the last 10 minutes of the class. There are indirect and direct assessment strategies to gather data to help you define the behavior well and to consider what functions it may serve as which setting events may contribute to the behavior happening. Indirect methods involve interviews and record reviews. A functional analysis interview is done with the student, the parents, teachers, paras, and support staff where you ask them about the occurrence of the behaviors and what the behaviors look like. 
what was happening before the behavior, afterward, and any knowledge of the context of the student and what they might be walking through. You also do a review of their records, student strengths, their health records, achievement, retentions, language competencies, any existing special education documentation, report cards, discipline history at the school, mental health considerations, pattern of school changes, and any data from non-school services. Direct observations are essential and you directly observe actual behaviors in hopefully at least two to three settings at school with ABC charts, an antecedent behavior and consequence chart. Check this one out on the slide. Scatter plots charts help us visually see when behaviors are occurring and not occurring across a period of time. Interval recording systems are especially helpful as you record on-task engagement for the target student as compared to their same gender peers in the classroom. At the beginning of minute one, you would look at the student and record if they are engaged, the type of task they're being asked to do, listening to the teacher, working in a group, doing homework by themselves, triggers, etc., and then compare their behavior to different same gender peers after 30 seconds. Then one would observe the target student again at minute two and continue this data collection pattern on task engagement for both the target student as compared to the same gender peers in the classroom for about 20 minutes. Some interval recording systems note time of day, the physical setting, presence of a particular person, certain activity, and reinforcements for these behaviors. You can calculate how often the target student is on task, and some systems have you select the type of task being asked to do, otherwise known as the antecedent, and the consequence of their behavior. Incident reports and anecdotal written descriptions of the student's behavior also would be considered a direct observation of their behavior. The last strategy rarely used is an environmental manipulation in which you may artificially test a hypothesis or test to see if the behavior is addressing a particular function. Let's take a look at an FBA case study and apply the steps of an FBA process to the case of Donatus.